we're all just waiting for Juwan Howard to be resigned, and the Eagles have the luxury of reaching out and signing him whenever the hell they want because nobody else yeah. in the National Football League seems to like him as much as we do. Jaquan Hardy got a shot to make this team. I know he's not a, on your original 53, but no. had you known that, would well, you be editing? Well, a couple things, a couple clarifications. Yeah, I did it before Jaquan Hardy. The Eagles have not officially signed Jaquan Hardy yet. He's right. coming in today. Uh, I can tell you his camp thinks they're going to sign. And good football Monday, Birds fans. Although each and every single start of Birds 365, we scream, let's go, let's go. We actually mean it this week because let's go. The season is right. We are on the doorstep. It is upon us with the Eagles reporting to training camp tomorrow, which means John McMullen will be reporting to training camp, but not till Wednesday. Right, Johnny Mac? They're going to give you grass time starting on Wednesday? <laughs> Uh, starting on Wednesday, very limited grass time this summer, but grass time nonetheless. Um, yeah, I mean, did you see Ruben's column this week, Jody? Yes. Uh, did you see his last nugget? I I really enjoyed that, so I'll Ooh. give Ruben a hat. I read it. I don't remember it, so please. Uh, uh, Dick Vermeil right. obviously is about to go. Oh, whoa, whoa, about the Hall amount of practice thing. hours. Yes. Yeah, and he compared. Dick Vermeil's first training camp, which, by the way, went from July 5th to September 3rd, and they played six preseason games back then. And he he compared the number of hours of preparation time, as best he could figure, ballparking it, at about, about 180 hours compared to this year, which how many, is how unbelievable. Many? How many hours are the Eagles supposed to be practicing? Just a general guesstimate, probably within an hour. Yeah, well, there's a little bit. He probably undersold it. He had it 19. 19 hours. 19 hours. Um, now, see, there are walkthroughs. See, the problem is, back in those days, like, everything was open to the media. Like, everything. They didn't care because the sport wasn't as popular, and they enjoyed, you know, the, coverage, the, the sure. publicity and the coverage and all that kind of stuff. Now... They Friday news de- dumped us on the uh, credential applications. They didn't come out till Friday afternoon, uh, the week before training camp, late in the afternoon, six, seven o'clock. Um, they don't want the coverage. So, you know, there's a lot of walkthroughs. They get one walkthrough, one real practice, whatever you want to call it. They're both, you know, each day. Um, so there's a little bit more, but yeah. It's way, it's not even remotely uh, like it used to be. And we all have to get used to it. Those of us who can remember back to when Dick Vermeil was the coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, We just can long for those days all we want, but they are gone. And they should not be forgotten, but do not lament the fact that. uh, Don't lament six preseason games. I'll say that. Uh, There you go. Uh, Oh, Johnny finding the silver lining of every cloud. Um, yeah, there's just going to be less preparation done. That's the new norm in the National Football League. And the Eagles are even on the low end of things because they believe that less is more and guys don't get hurt. So in uh, forget about comping the Eagles of today to the Eagles of 40 plus years ago. Just comp the Eagles of today to the other teams in the National Football League. And the Eagles put in less hours and practice time than almost everybody else in the National Football League. But Despite the fact that they're going to have so little time, self-decided so little time, uh, to prep for the upcoming season, John McMullen came out with his first (laughs) 53-man roster for the Philadelphia Eagles this week on jacobsports.com. He takes pride in the fact that before the season starts, he's pretty damn good at guessing along with the Eagles as to who is going to be kept. Now, the one thing I must ask you before we go through your list and uh, we've got two good guests joining us today, Paul Domich and uh, Zach Berman, two very good uh, Eagle Beat guys. Um, did you put this list together before the major Eagle signing over the weekend of the former Dallas Cowboy back who took it in from 22 yards out in that varsity versus JV game last year in December? 
between the Eagles and the Cowboys. Uh, and and a quick, a quick question, Jaquan Hardy, do I remember him right? Was he a guy who was quasi prominently shown on Hard Knocks last year? In yeah, the somebody Cowboys else told game? me that. I think he was, but yeah. I didn't watch it that closely. Uh, some another fan mentioned that, but yeah, I remember I Jaquan get... Hardy. He was a guy. And they do a nice job, and we'll talk about hard knocks when it gets underway again this year. Um, Lions, uh, uh, maybe our buddy Deuce Staley will be prominently yeah. shown. Hopefully. Um, you know, but, maybe he'll get a head coaching job if he's prominently shown. There there you go. Uh, yeah. Laid the groundwork. Um, I remember Jaquan Hardy, and you don't – It's a, It's a. for me, it's an informational but also an entertainment vehicle. And they do a pretty good job of producing that show and putting it together. You have a couple of guys that you hook into that are borderline to make the team guys that you either root for or root against. And Jaquan Hardy was a guy I kind of rooted for, and he was on the uh, Cowboys roster last year. And he did play in that last game when all the subs got elevated for the Cowboys, had a good game. The Eagles picked them up off the scrap heap yesterday because they were a little light in the running back room. We're all just waiting for Jawan Howard to be resigned, and the Eagles have the luxury of reaching out and signing him whenever the hell they want because nobody else yeah. in the National Football League seems to like him as much as we do. Jaquan Hardy got a shot to make this team. I know he's not a, on your original 53, but no. had you known that, would well, you be Well, a couple editing? things, a couple clarifications. Yeah, I did it before Jaquan Hardy. The Eagles have not officially signed Jaquan Hardy yet. He's right. coming in today. Uh, I can tell you his camp thinks they're going to sign. Now, um, you know, he Minnesota wanted him to come in for a workout, and I guess they're not to sign him. They wanted him to work out. Um, and he gave an indication there that the Eagles were planning to sign him. But then the news got he's coming in for a workout, so he could still screw this thing up, number one. Uh, but I do think he's 225 pounds. Um they need that bigger back. We've been talking about it. We've been talking about Juwan Howard. It makes sense to go with a younger guy who's healthy. You know, as effective as Jordan Howard has been with this team, he's always hurt at this stage. He's clearly breaking down. Um, and I think their their sentiment, the Eagles' sentiment is, you know, we joke about it here, Jody, Jody Mack, John McMullen, we could probably all get, I don't know, probably me, only three and a half, but average running back, it's going to get four, four point five yards of carry behind this offensive line. You might as well get the younger guy. So if he gets here and he signs, yeah, they need that big back presence. And we talked about, you know, break glass in case of emergency with with Jordan Howard. They have no obvious fourth running back. You know, Kennedy Brooks, who I had on my first fifty three, just as a curveball. To be honest, this is not my official one. This is the start of camp. Jason Huntley, you know, his path is a kick returner. And if he's going to be the kick returner, you got to get Jalen Rager out of here somehow because the Eagles aren't cutting him. They might trade him, but they aren't cutting him. And to trade him, well, they need somebody to trade him to. So, um, you know, there's a lot of hurdles for him making this team. Um, if he gets here at 225 pounds, he could offer him something they don't have. Yeah, he could be an off-the-radar guy. And that's why I said, in this, you know, why the the first one before training camp, there are going to be names brought in, Jody. Might only be a couple. Might be a trade. As I said, maybe Rager's out of here. Um, there are going to be a couple tweaks and names you don't even know that are going to be on that final 53. So maybe Hardy's one of them. You, you mentioned uh, uh, Hunley as a potential return guy. Yeah, he's not on your list, nor is Britton Covey not on your list, nor is, nor is Devin Allen not on your list. And these guys all could very well be on the practice squad, or at least two out of three of them would, would uh, I think, uh, be guys that the Eagles would try and at least keep within the organization, if not on the 53. Um, if you've got those three guys not on the roster, who it, who are your return guys for week one? Helen Rager. Jalen Rager. Oh, so you got that's right. You still got Rager here. Yeah. Uh, both punts and kickoffs. Both punts and kickoffs. And, Is that going to work, J Mac? Well, he did it last year, but it didn't work. But you know, the Eagles did it. Um, uh, 
I, I will say he's got some explosiveness. Now, the problem is he makes bad decisions. He doesn't always catch the ball. And that's more important. But he did have, I think, a 30-yard punt return, a 40-yard kickoff return. They haven't had anybody else who can do that. So when he does get going, there can be some positives. Um, you know, I forget who we talked about this last week, and I'm sure we'll talk about it again. You know, you have this... It, it, <laughs> You have this thought of of him being there on September 11th, and what does that mean to the general manager? You know, is it more embarrassing to cut a a, a 2021st round pick, take the the financial medicine, which in, you know, it's a lot, but in a large scale of things, this team has proven they'll leave dead money, $33 million of dead money for Carson Wentz. They'll leave dead money and keep Fletcher Cox and pay him $14 million on top of it. So. They're not concerned about that part of it. So I, I, I kind of don't buy that anymore from the way they acted the past couple of years. So I start to think of myself, if you're, well, if it's an ego thing, isn't it worse that he's on the team and he's not a, really a part of the team and you're trying to make him the kick returner? And, it, it, you know, I, I mean, isn't that worse? Isn't that a worse look than just, you know, out of sight, out of mind? Sure, you take some hits for, 48 hours maybe and all the stories are done and then you got a week two jody what's week two justin jefferson coming in to lincoln financial field True. and then you have that dichotomy yeah. he'll probably go for 150 even if the vikings lose and you know people are going to be saying and jalen regger's just sitting there on the sidelines how, how, how was that look for howie roseman so yeah. you know he should start thinking a little bit more in that direction, in my opinion, but he's going to be here. If they can't trade him. He's going to be here. Here's my opinion <clears throat> um, and how I would handle it. If how he uh, asked my advice, it comes down to answering one simple question. How much fear do you actually have that when you cut Jalen Rager, he will land with another team and while not uh, live up to the level of where you picked him in the first round, uh, if that happens, yeah, sorry, you just got poked in the eye. There's nothing you can do about it. But realistically, can he be better for someone else <clears throat> than he has been in his two years for you? If you believe that and that uh, worries you and you think that if you cut him, then he's going to go somewhere else and put up better numbers than he did for you, then you got to keep him because you don't want that to happen. But if you have realistically come to an evaluation of his talent level and say, yeah, we just missed. We swung and we missed. The pitch is biased. It's in the catcher's mid. We swung. We missed. And guess what? He's just not that good. He's not that good with us. He's not going to be that good with anybody else. Wash your hands. Move on. Get on with the rest of your life. That's what it comes down to is your actual evaluation of the player. Not only for what he can do with your team, because you went out and got A.J. Brown, so there's less opportunities for the wide receiver, so he's going to have less of a chance to uh, catch up, make up, prove that he was worthy of at least a day two pick rather than a day one pick, whatever. Um, you just have to evaluate the player and say, what would he do with Well, can I give you a third category, Jody? Go ahead, yeah. Um, he's going to be better, because how could he be worse? Oh, he can be worse. But uh, I don't know if he can be worse. Oh, yeah, he That's can. A, he can absolutely um, be worse. But what if he's a fourth receiver? Who cares? I mean, he's better than he was here. I mean, in a lot of ways, I, I compare it to the Sixers and Ben Simmons. And, and Ben, as much as I dislike him as a player, um, and I think he's so limited in certain aspects, he's he's still good in certain aspects. Right. And he made He made all-star teams. Yeah. And he can go somewhere and be effective and be good. But I advocated the Sixers moving on because it wasn't going to work here. It wasn't going to work here, period, here. And he's Jalen Rager's a change of scenery guy. I believe when he goes wherever he ultimately goes, whether it's this year, next year, he'll be better um, because it's hard for him to be worse. Now, I guess he can be worse, as you pointed out, but it's going to be hard. Um, he's going to be better, but so what? It, 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 to me, if I'm Howie Roseman, it's clear it's not working here, and that's all that matters to me. That's all that matters to me. Now, if he goes to Dallas and, and makes a play on occasion, well, yeah, that would hurt a little bit, but for different 
reasons because it's a rival and people play it up and things like that. But in the bigger picture, it's not going to work here. So that's all that concerns me uh, if I'm the GM. But somebody's actually got to beat them out. And how many receiver, receivers are the Eagles going to actually carry? Uh, John put together his uh, first list and had uh, Jalen Rager on it. So does that mean he's going to make this squad? Uh, you know, I'm the president of the Greg Ward fan club, but I got enough of a look at what the Eagles thought of and the usage of Greg Ward last year with uh, Hertz as their full-time quarterback. He just fell off the face of the earth. And if he's sticking around purely because he's a good veteran guy, and the Eagles don't have the need for that anymore. Last year with Rager still young and them still crossing their fingers, holding out hope he could become better. Yeah, I could see where that was an added value. Uh, rookie year for Devontae Smith. Now he's a second-year player and A.J. Brown is here. I, I don't know that the Greg Ward's going to be able to make this squad. Well, he's probably the odds are probably against him. That's another one where I tried to go a little bit outside the box. My theory on that is, you know, the practice squad is so big nowadays, 16. Um, you can do whatever you want with these younger players. The, the Eagles, they're younger receivers. They can get them through waivers. Now, the one potential to that, and you've kind of brought it up in the past, if Devin, Devin Allen returns a kick, say, in the preseason, well, then maybe you got to think about keeping them on the 53. Yeah. Um, you know, Britton Kobe, a lot of excitement as a punt returner. As I said, you can get him through waivers. I easily. agree there. Um, uh, you know, Josh Hammonds of the world, John Hightower. So you've already saw it with John Hightower. You can get all these guys through waivers, put them on the practice squad if you want them. The Carrick Weed balls, on and on and on. Um, that's where I say, you know, it's a little bit different to cut to 53 when the practice squad is, it works both ways. The practice squad is so big, you can also put veteran players on the practice squad now. So it's a little bit different from a strategy standpoint. And I don't see like great developmental talent at receiver for the Eagles. I see a bunch of guys um, and unless Devin Allen, uh, as I said, Show somebody else something. Um, I don't think you have to worry about getting any of those guys through waivers. And here's where Howie Roseman's got a leg up. Um, he knows what other teams were talking to Devin Allen, if any other teams were talking to Devin Allen. When, when the news came out that Devin Allen had signed with the Eagles, you know what my first question was? Who's Devin Oops. Allen? Yeah, I had no idea who the guy was. It's Unless been you're a years track since man. he played yeah. at Oregon. And yes, no, I'm not up on the latest world track rankings and or uh, best in divisions and the like. So it came completely out of left field and it's a surprise when I got the details of it and found, okay, yeah, you know what? This might not be a bad take a shot in the dark signing by the Eagles. Well, the Eagles had to sign him either as the only team with interest in him or if there was another team, if his agent was shopping him around to the entire National Football League. I'm sure that he told Howie, no, listen, we've got interest from Team A, B, C, D, and E, and F. So Howie should at least have those teams in his mind as to potential landing spots for Allen. If they have injury issues and or their kickoff or putt return it goes down, you might want to factor that in as to whether you decide to keep Devin Allen on your uh, 53. He is John McMullen. I'm Jody McDonald. Tomorrow's the day, folks. Eagles back in camp. They'll just be reporting. John and his cohorts get grass time on Wednesday, the first true Eagle workout of the season. It's nice to have football back. It's also nice to get our buddy Paul Domwich back into the mix. He will join us next here on Birds 365.